Translation and Purports by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. My Lord, you are the origin of the creation by virtue of the lotus flower which sprouts from your navel. You are the supreme controller of the senses and the sense objects. And you are also all-pervading Vasudev. You are most peaceful and because of your self-illuminated existence, you are not disturbed by the six kinds of transformations. Purport. But a page long, please. Here, Srila Prabhupada. The Lord, as Gabodakshai Vishnu, lies in the ocean of Gaba within this universe, and from his navel, the lotus flower sprouts. Lord Brahma is generated from that lotus flower, and from Lord Brahma, the creation of this material world begins. As such, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Gabodakshai Vishnu, is the origin of the material senses and sense objects. Since Lord Shiva considers himself to be one of the products of the material world, his senses are under the control of the Supreme Creator. The Supreme Lord is also known as Rishikesha, Master of the Senses, which indicates that our senses and sense objects are formed by the Supreme Lord. As such, he can control our senses and out of his mercy engage them in the service of the master of the senses. In the conditioned state, the living entity struggles in this material world and engages his senses for material satisfaction. However, if the living entity is graced by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he can engage these very senses in the service of the Lord. Lord Shiva desires not to be misled by the material senses, but to engage always in the service of the Lord without being subject to contamination by materialistic influences. By the grace and help of Lord Vasudev, who is all-pervading, one can engage his senses in devotional service without deviation just as the Lord acts without deviation. The words, Shantaya Kutastaya Swarochise are very significant. Although the Lord is within this material world, He is not disturbed by the waves of material existence. However, conditioned souls are agitated by six kinds of transformation. Namely, they become agitated when they are hungry when they are thirsty, when they are grieved, when they are illusioned, when they grow old, and when they are on the deathbed. Although conditioned souls become very easily illusioned by these conditions of, in the material world, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as the Super Soul, Vasudev, is never agitated by those transformations. Therefore, it is said here, Kutastaya, that he is always peaceful and devoid of agitation because of his prowess, which is described herein as Swarochise, indicating that he is illuminated by his own transcendental position. In other words, the individual soul, although within the illumination of the Supreme, sometimes falls down from that illumination because of his tiny position. And when he falls down, he enters into material conditional life. The Lord, however, is not subject to such conditioning. Therefore, he is described as self-illuminated. Consequently, any conditioned soul within this material universe can remain completely perfect when he is under the protection of Vasudev or when he is engaged in devotional service. Gantaraj Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Chanting the song sung by Lord Shiva It seems that it was not just one mantra It is a whole song Lord Shiva 
is generously revealing the absolute truth to the prachetas and in that way to all who get to listen to this song. In today's verse, Lord Shiva is making a clear distinction of the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in relation to the creation of the universe, in relation to the creation of the senses, the sense objects, and then also he speaks about the transcendental attitude of the Supreme Lord. What is his state of consciousness? So we begin by glorifying that the Lord is Nama Pankaja Nabaya. From his navel sprouted a lotus upon which Lord Brahma took his birth. So now try to take this in. Gabodakshai Vishnu is an expansion of an expansion of an expansion of four times two expansions of Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his First expansion to the right is Balaram. And from Lord Balaram expands the Chaturvyuha, uh, Vasudev, Aniruddha, Sankarshan, and Pradumna. And from that last Sankarshan, another expansion, Vasudev, Aniruddha, Pradumna, Sankarshan. And then from that Maha Sankarshan expands the Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu is lying on the causal ocean. And that Mahavishnu, with his one exhalation, the manifestation of all the material universes come. They are coming out of his breathing, out of his pores. And these universes are like golden eggs floating on this causal ocean. And they last as long as that one outbreath goes out. And when he inhales, that is the time of their destruction. It is said of our universe that it lasts about 311 trillion, 40 billion years. So how expansive is Mahavishnu? Sometimes this thought of God as being the biggest we can apply on Mahavishnu. <laughs> how, how huge is he that so many universes can come out from his pores? And uh, how big are his transcendental lungs that one outbreath lasts for 311 trillion, 40 billion years? Now that is God. So this understanding of Vishnu as the Supreme uh, also corresponds to this majestic form that Mahavishnu actually possesses. And the scale of his form in relation to this material universes that are being uh, ejected from his own transcendental body. So now, from that Mahavishu, a further expansion is there, who enters into the material universe. He is known as Chirodakashai Vishnu. He has an abode within the material universes uh, known as Sweta Dweep, where there is the shore of the milk ocean. The demigods, they go there when there's some disturbances to speak to Shirodakshaya Vishnu. So a further expansion is Gabodakshaya Vishnu. He gets his name because that expansion sits at the bottom of the universe. From his body, he perspires. And his perspiration sort of fills up the universal egg somewhat. 
and forms an ocean. So when a living entity says that I am God, well, your sweat only stinks up your shirt and clothes and those who are around you. Uh, your sweat cannot fill up an ocean. Uh, the Lord, he perspires and fills up an ocean. And so he lies in that ocean and from his navel a lotus grows. So this lotus is then the abode of all the planets within the universe, it is said within. But that lotus grows and at the top sprout, sprouts a flower and then the self-born Swayambu, Lord Brahma, makes his birth there. And Lord Brahma is then the first created being in the universe. Uh, he is the Adikavi, the original philosopher, the original knower of the Vedas. And he himself doesn't know what is his duty, what should he do. He is bewildered. Where am I? Who am I? A hint at the type of inquiry that is necessary, that we should be curious, you know, who am I? Where am I? It's bewildering for the living being to know in the creation actually exactly where are we. We take it for granted in the Krishna consciousness movement that we get to understand about how the universe is structured and where the Bhumandala is, where are we. So it's something like at the shopping malls, these days they are so big that they have these screens which have like a map of the mall just to find a particular shop you can go there maybe you've seen and then it will write you are here and then you can sort of see from where you are where everything else is so as far as liberation is concerned knowing where we are uh, can help us to understand where to go next and what happens there. So Nama Panka Janabaya, you are that Lord from whose navel the lotus has sprouted. This is corroborated by Queen Kunti also, um, the first canto. She chants a similar prayer, Nama Panka Janabaya, Nama Panka Maline, Nama Pankaja Netraya, Namaste Pankajangraye. That, O oh Lord, you are that personality whose navel is shaped like a lotus, who is always garlanded by lotus flower garlands, whose glance is as cool as the lotus, and whose lotus feet are marked by lotus flowers so this lotus is always used in relation to the lord because the lotus is famous for growing within the pond of water but the flower never touches the water so it's always transcending its place of origin so the lord when he is in this material world he is always transcendental to the conditions of this material world. So throughout the purport, Srila Prabhupada makes these uh, comparisons just to help us understand that we are not God. That we are affected by the conditions of this material world. And Krishna is not. So the living entity struggles in this material world because he's engaging his senses for material satisfaction. The Lord, however, his senses are never engaged in material sense satisfaction. They are by nature self-satisfied. Yesterday we heard of the word Atmaramas Chamunayo Nigranta Apurukrami. Kuvantya Haitukim Bhakti Itambuta Gunohari. There 
the devotees are known as Atmarama, just as the Lord is known as Atmarama, self-satisfied. But it is said of the Atmaramas, the self-satisfied um, yogis, the mystics, even though they have now transcended sense gratification, they are Brahma, Bhuta, Prasanna, Atma, they are happily undisturbed by the material pushings, still Nigranta apurukrame kuvanti ayetukim bhakti itam buta gunahari. Still, they are attracted to the supreme personality of Godhead. Why? Because itam buta gunahari, he possesses uh, qualities which are transcendental. So it's not that once one is no longer attracted materially. He cannot be attracted spiritually. Sometimes people think like that, that uh, spiritual life would mean becoming fully detached, having no interest in anything, therefore ready to take an eternal holiday. Therefore this merging idea is very popular. I'm done with this world, now I just want to be one with the light. But that is a problem because the soul by nature is always seeking pleasure, ananda maya biasat. So in the Brahman effulgence, there's no activity. And so we become bored. You know boredom. <laughs> you may be feeling bored right now. <laughs> but uh, you tolerate your boredom because in the mind, you may think of all the other things you will do after when this is over. <laughs> so that's our position, always bored. We don't have a, a, a source of ananda within us. Uh, Krishna is ever satisfied. He doesn't need anything outside of himself to become happy and blissful. We are always in a desert-like condition, dry just waiting for something, anything, <laughs> anything for the eyes to see, for the ears to hear, for the tongue to taste. We depend on the senses for our titillation, for our so-called happiness. Therefore, it is said by Prahlad Maharaj, Natevitu Swatakatam Hivishnum Durashaya Yebai Atamanina Not knowing that our Welfare mm. lies in Vishnu. We are depending on the external world, Bhayata. We are looking outside. But the world is presenting us with difficulties and challenges. Yes, indigestion. It's a problem for people. Health, whatever it may be, Practically all of us here have some sort of health challenge, yes? And probably we all have some sort of medication that we are taking. If you don't have any medication that you're taking, all glories to you. But just wait a little bit. In due course of time, the body presents something where you need medication. So in comparison, to our body and our situation, the Lord is far more different from us, transcendental. Here he is described as Rishikesha. He is the master of the senses. So Prabhupada presents, what's the solution? These senses want some objects to enjoy. So what should we do? We have this body, it has its senses. We can't help ourselves. We have to engage with some objects. So it is said, Savopadi vini muktam tat paratena nimalam rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti ujete. Shilrupa Goswami writes in the Nectar of Devotion that when one engages their senses, rishikena, in the service of rishikesha, Krishna, the master of the senses, then two things happen. Savopadi vinimuktam. 
that all the designations that we attach to ourselves, uh, they become vinimuktam, we become liberated from them. Uh, we transcend the bodily concept of life. And tat paratena nir malam, in the heart there's dirt, mala, all sorts of lust and his cousins and friends like greed and envy and madness and illusion. So engaging the senses in the service of the master of the senses, then the, the, the dirt in the heart near Malam becomes purified. And this is the condition of seva. Seva nam bhakti ujate. Devotional service actually means exclusively engaging one's senses in the service of Krishna. So this always repeating that we should engage in devotional service uh, is to help us with our problems because we have many problems. Uh, let us just understand more clearly what our problems are. Here it is mentioned a certain portion of them, they're called like the whips. They are six in number. One, we are always agitated by hunger. It's possibly going on right now, or anyone who's watching at home, uh, maybe they're already cooking to deal with hunger. Thirst, always aggrieved, always illusioned, struggling with old age, and finally, the agony of facing death on one's deathbed. These conditions are to sober us up because we have a tendency to want to feel comfortable at every point. We're always trying to arrange things just to make them super comfortable. I see my sister's children uh, a lot of fights break out in the living room when I go there because they have Gurudev, the telelive vision, right in the middle of the living room. And so then they, there's the cushions, the couches, everything has been bought there, bean bags. And each one is trying to find the most coziest way to lie down and, and have the cushions and the angle, and then they fight over the remote control. So Ishwara, who will be in charge? And uh, so for their comforts, and it causes so much conflict because, hey, move your legs. No, I have my legs, I put them here first. <laughs> You know, like cats. Cats are always like trying to find the most snazzy way to just kind of <laughs> park off, you know. So this cat comfort consciousness, uh, triple C. Cat comfort consciousness. <laughs> okay, that's something. We can write that down. To avoid the cat comfort consciousness. No matter how many cushions, right, we're piling up, something is not right. So this is Krishna's mercy to create discomfort in this material world. Discomfort is a, a reminder. Hey, Baba, Chief Jago, this is not where you're supposed to be. But mature life, unfortunately, without knowing that there is the transcendental world to go to, becomes 50, 60, 70, 80 years of trying to reverse this discomfort, to remove temporariness in this world, to remove the anxiety, the insecurity that we feel in this world, not knowing that all these are pointing to a reality that we want security. 
we want bliss. We want comfort. But where is it to be found? So our problems are also pointing to the solutions. If we study our problems, it, whatever we are lacking is telling us of the existence of the opposite. But it's just not maturely to be found. So in this material world, what does Krishna say? Matras pashas to konteya shitoshna shukadukada. Titiksha, tolerance. Oh, isn't that such a sad way to look at life, you know? It's about tolerating. <laughs> Krishna doesn't just say tolerate the suffering, he says tolerate happiness and distress. So the life of the devotee is not necessarily that we're just on the tolerance mode, but we are encouraged to engage positive engagement of the senses in the service of Krishna. Then, when these agitations which will naturally come, hunger, thirst, old age, being aggrieved, being illusioned, um, they do not become the central focus in our consciousness. If we are seeing beautiful Krishna and then beautiful David walks into our eye line. With beautiful David, please move. You know, I'm just looking at beautiful Krishna. <laughs> uh, because we are absorbed. But if we don't have beautiful Krishna in our vision, then it's beautiful David, beautiful tree, beautiful car, beautiful, oh no, not so beautiful, so many things. That is suffering. It is just like an unmarried man or woman uh, who wants to become married. So they are always kind of looking, is this the one? Is that the one? Is she the one? Maybe, maybe this one, maybe that one. <laughs> Sizing up, you know, who will be the right person? So it's a bit of a disturbance to try and figure out. Therefore, one who's then secured within marriage, uh, they have theirs in the cupboard there, they don't worry. That is why our consciousness is always being uh, petitioned by the Lord to absorb. We read today, you know, the four things. Always think of me. Become my devotee. Offer your basis unto me. Then surely you will come to me. Prabhupada said, this is Krishna consciousness. Fixing our mind on Krishna. Uh, Krishna pervades everything. So there is nowhere where Krishna is not to be found. Only the owl with his eyes closed says there is no sun. Only Baba, open your eyes. <laughs> so the spiritual master is teaching us how to see Krishna in all places at all times. And this in the beginning is like poison. Like we, we're looking for the gap to do our own thing, you know. <laughs> you know, like the morning program from half past four. Uh, you got up, you just kind of, okay, yeah, you remember, I'm a Hare Krishna, actually, I'm in a temple, okay. Uh, shower, Mangalati, and you get through it, you know, Tilak and everything, you know, bow down, and you're here, and then. And then the song is going, and then he, he's trying to stay up, and just, he really staring at Jagannath, like, save me. <laughs> and, and then it's, it's Japa time, you know, as soon as it's, between that, maybe before Japa, just, me just get in something that's just for me. Maybe let me just go out there and just check my phone or something. We're trying to find some gap. And it's too much Krishna. Japa, seven o'clock is there. Conchal is blowing. I have no gap for me. Where, when? Okay, maybe after Kirtan. 
Uh, after Kerry Tan finishes, some man or woman is already sitting here, oh, no more. <laughs> and we're feeling squeezed, too much Krishna. <laughs> we want to find an excuse, let me go upstairs to just kind of walk around in my room. <laughs> Yeah, the mind, the mind is, is trying to reject uh, being absorbed in Krishna because part of the training it has not realized that actually this absorption in Krishna is favorable also for the mind. It is still trying to be an, our enemy. So why Krishna, Kutastaya, Swarochise, Krishna is supremely peaceful. And we are lacking in peace. Yes. We are always agitated. You are looking very intently, prayerfully folded hands, meditating on the deity. And then... Mm, some fly lands on your lip. <laughs> you know, it's, it's people even smack themselves trying to deal with that. Um, so very easily agitated, no peace. But when we are in contact with Krishna, when we become absorbed in Krishna, he's always peaceful and devoid of agitation because he's supremely powerful. He's always illuminated by all knowledge, so no ignorance can agitate him. So Prabhupada then, at the end of his purport, after delineating the differences between Krishna, the Supreme Lord, and the conditioned soul, outlining our position of being aggrieved, is making the case, why, why should we be interested in this? Uh, full of, we're hearing the glories of Krishna. Sometimes it's very painful for the conditioned soul to hear the glories of another. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, yeah, we know. Keep it moving. Mm. The devotees, they love that, to hear the glorifications. You go to a Vyasa Puja, you know, some of them are like the whole day. Morning session, evening session. Uh, and devotees are just happily hearing the glories of the spiritual master. How he has demonstrated surrender, how he has assisted devotees, his service attitude, challenges he's taken, projects he's engaged in, so many things. And we we feel encouraged by hearing that. Yeah, in mature life, we generally cannot tolerate people who like to talk about themselves and, and their glories. I am this, I did this, I went there. I'm, I, 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 it becomes annoying. But Krishna and his name, we read in Nectar of Devotion, and his glories, are none different. So the glory of Krishna is Krishna appearing before us in sound. So what is the catch? What's in it for us in this tapasya of hearing about Krishna? Prabhupada says, consequently, any conditioned soul within this material universe can remain completely perfect when he is under the protection of Vasudeva or when he's engaged in devotional service. So our perfection is in our taking full shelter of the perfect person. Like Srila Prabhupada said, we are not perfect, but what we are saying is perfect. I may not be perfect, but Repeating Krishna's message, Krishna is perfect, therefore what we are saying is perfect. And so we can say, follow us. Because we are perfectly following the perfect Supreme Person. 
So our perfection is this engagement in devotional service because it is our eternal occupation, it's our eternal activity. We are eternally the part and parcel, the servant of Krishna. So when we are acting in service of Krishna, that's when we are actually being real. People are always say, you know, be real, man. I like people who are real, who are authentic. <laughs> so being real is being in service to Krishna, because that is who we are. We are the servant of Krishna. In time, we will celebrate this identity. I am a servant of Krishna. And we become eager to act in service to Krishna and naturally become blissful. So that is a few words we have from today. This verse, Kantarat Shimad Bhagavatam Kija, Shilpa Bhagavatam Kija.